and we're back and the first thing I'm gonna do is use this button here on the bottom left a lot of people are saying I need to use this button and by doing so I could use the basically the right stick to attack and that's a really good tip I've been messing around a little bit with that button but I hadn't really paid too much heed to it and I really think I'm gonna stick with this because it just feels better I've had the most trouble as you've probably noticed with combat I'm just not very good with the mobile combat yet I need a lot of help and so I do appreciate the tip so thanks everyone who mentioned that all right in the last video I said we're gonna take advantage of our kind of downtime at night to do some crafting and the first thing I want to craft and you can see it here in the menu is the furnace and I'm standing right next to the workbench that is required to craft the furnace but one thing if you're not familiar with Terraria that you need to know is the uh, crafting station isn't the only crafting station uh, things like the furnace anvils looms sawmills uh, that sort of thing can craft specialty items and so some are more important than others the furnace as you might imagine and if you've played Minecraft you can probably no, right away the furnace is one of the most important items of them all and you should be getting it early on and one of the reasons I left this small room here was to go ahead and have a place to put my crafting equipment all right and I had a bit of a trouble there putting the furnace down and so I've edited that part out but here the furnace is down and all of a sudden wouldn't you know it there's a new crafting option shown here and this is the first day of the rest of your life because now you can start using metal objects um, one bar of copper requires three ores I don't have too much I've got 30 ore and so I'm only good for 10 bars of copper let's go ahead and craft those and these really I can't expect that they'll get very far uh, copper in and of itself isn't a particularly strong metal it's the most basic metal available and so I can't really do anything with it right now as far as I can see but you're going to want to do the same with any lead or iron ore that you come across. What you'll do is the same with the copper ore. You'll smelt it in the furnace into bars. And using those bars, you're going to be able to craft a good number of things. If you go into the Wikipedia for the game, the, the Terraria Wiki, you'll be able to click on the furnace and see what kind of stuff you can uh, create using the different types of bars. Um, as I said in the last video, you do need a healthy amount of or to create a suit of armor and so I would begin if I were you by getting a good sword and so if you come across let's say a stack of iron ore, you smelt it down into the bars make the first order of business maybe making that iron sword because it'll make you more resilient and it'll make exploration easier anyway that's it for crafting for now I'm really not in a position to really improve my gear I just don't have enough ore and materials but one thing I can do while I'm waiting around here is I can start digging if I can't go outside I can go down and that's precisely what I'm going to do um, it would be nice if I had some rope so that I could come back up very easily but instead of that let's see if I can build some platforms I do have wood let's go ahead and craft some more platforms and you can see them filling up my inventory there. You don't need many to climb up. Just one ought to do. Spaced every now and then so that you can jump back up. And you'll see me do that in just a minute. Anyway, uh, that's that. And so let's just go ahead and start digging down. And this is where the smart cursor really shines. I've spoken highly of it before. And I think it's kind of self-evident just watching me dig how useful it is. So again, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I just want to do platforms like that every now and then, and for that matter, maybe a torch every now and then, just to keep it well lit. Alright, and with that said, let's go ahead and go down and start digging some more. Okay, and one thing you're going to want to do is if you're digging down and there's not much going on, you may come across either some stone or some more that you want to harvest. That's a, a good stopping off place if you're not finding any caverns opening up as you get dig down. And in this particular world, as fate would have it, there's not much of interest 
in the first little section of jumping down or digging down rather and so I'm gonna take a little breather from that and just using my smart cursor I'm gonna dig a little um, hallway here to the left to see if there's anything there and you know what it's win-win because -win, maybe I find a, a cavern maybe I don't but at least I pick up some stone which I kind of want at this point since I hadn't really harvested much and so there's obviously nothing really there and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back up to something else I saw along the way that maybe you see over there just to the right of my character I said I didn't have much ore and so I'm gonna make a point to dig up all the ore that I can I know it's not very impressive it's not iron or lead it's just copper but you know what every little bit helps at this early stage and so I'm gonna get what I can and so there I've gotten a bit more ore and that's the kind of opportunistic digging you need to do uh, when you're kind of just killing time at this early stage again you're not really good for much it's not necessarily a strike against your uh, your play because even if you're pretty decent at the game you may find that your character just character is just too darn weak at this stage and so there's no shame in just kind of dodging a fight for now and uh, living to fight another day and you know what this kind of infrastructure and I do mean it is infrastructure is pretty helpful in the long run really because you're gonna stick with the map hopefully which means you're gonna want to save time over the course of your overall run through the game if you have something like this that you start on early on I think it's pretty good motivation to continue working on it as your character progresses it's the kind of thing that the first time I played Terraria I really for lack of a better term, put off doing something like this. And what it meant was I would backtrack through caverns instead of going down something like this. And it took forever to get deeper into the underworld. And only after a while did I bite the bullet and really kind of knuckle down and dig one of these shafts down. Eventually you're gonna to want to use rope instead of this. Uh, but for now, these platforms are sufficient. And now I can walk around without worrying about falling down. Uh, I don't think I went over this yet, but let's go ahead and show you the housing query tool. If you're in the course of building a base and you're not sure why an NPC isn't showing up, let's say you have 75 silver and the merchant still isn't there, it's just the guide. Well, maybe something's wrong. And so one thing you can do is you hit this query tool and click on the room you're thinking should be an NPC room. Okay, and that's a good thing. I clicked on it and it says this housing is suitable. If for some reason you have a room that is not suitable, then the game will tell you. If I click on this far left room, for instance, which is not meant to be a residence, I click on it, it'll tell you this is not valid housing. And the same if I click on the outside world, where obviously there's nothing, that's not valid housing either. So the game will tell you if maybe you need to do some work to fix uh, your... NPC residence. So that's just a little thing I wanted to touch on. Anyway, as you can see, it's daytime again, and so I want to take advantage of that. I want to make hay while the sun is shining. Let's go ahead and smelt down that copper ore I just got. There's no sense in holding on to the ore if I have a furnace, so let's go ahead and craft that. Make do with your wooden uh, equipment for now if you can stomach it, and just stockpile that copper because you're going to want to use it. I think what I'm going to do at this point is scout along the surface for any additional ore I can find. Um, I've already ventured out here and found the ice biome, which may be a little tough for my character still, but let me see if I can find anything either in this biome or perhaps beyond it. And maybe see if there's anything down here. I'll plant a torch just to see. I'm not overly optimistic. Now that looks rather narrow, so I'm going to leave that alone. So let's press on and equip with my wooden armor and my wooden sword. Hopefully we can get through this. Um, the enemies here aren't too bad. They are a little tougher, but uh, I should be able to get through here. We'll see. My equipment is rather weak. It, it really takes a lot of hits even to kill these relatively weak slimes, but I made it past that battle. Let's see if I can get beyond the... Um, the ice biome and and scout out what's beyond maybe kill some flying fish while I'm at it I really want to get a better feel for the combat in this game on the mobile controls because it is 
kind of like learning a new language, as I said in the in an earlier video. It's very different from what I'm used to on the PC, and I feel very much a greenhorn, even though I know a lot about Terraria. This is all kind of new to me. All right, now this is interesting. This is a legitimate chasm, and I'm going to be very careful here because I don't want to get stuck down there. Never had a doubt. All right, now that we're on the other side and it's still daylight, I'm going to try to root around for some ore maybe visible from the surface. Um, there's no guarantee, of course, that I will find any, but I really need some more. This wood stuff really isn't cutting it, and I want to kind of get my character a little stronger than he is right now. He's pretty weak right now. All right, here's another large lake, and so the world is not really doing me any favors with all of these, um, all of these large lakes, and another lake vanquished. So now that we can safely traverse that, let's carry on and see what's further to the east. The world gen here is pretty strange. I'm seeing a cave system under here. I'm kind of wondering what's down in there. Uh, looks like maybe there's a desert coming up. It's not entirely clear. In fact, this is so steep. I'm going to have to plant a wooden platform just to get up here. So that's a little unusual. Uh, no, no desert. Just more ice. So let's carry on. It's pretty dark out here. I'm a little surprised. Ah, and here's the desert. All right. Well, very good. Yeah, this is a strange world, Jen. And one thing you got to keep in mind with sand, of course, is if you dig sand, it's going to collapse. Watch this. Watch what happens when I mine sand. See how it falls down like that? And ice slush does the same thing, and so you gotta be careful because it can actually land on you and hurt you if you don't wait for it to fall. It's one of those uh, game designs that keeps you on your toes, and frankly, it's pretty annoying. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's just one of those things in the game you gotta get used to. So, uh, sand can be used to make glass, if you wanna make glass windows for your base and that sort of thing, but I don't think it really has any any great utility early on for weapons and armor and that sort of thing so it, it's not that great for me right now it's not really what I'm after so I think what I might actually do is backtrack a little bit I'd seen some caves back here and usually there's some decent stuff within caves if you're willing to explore inside so let's do that all right I really wasn't expecting this this world as you saw in the first let's play video is a crimson world and so I guess you could call it the evil zone of this world is crimson and you see that kind of red hue that was there beforehand that's a crimson altar I believe anyway it's one of those curiosities of the map generation that it's there in the middle of the ice I'm not really sure what the story is there but you know on with business I see all this copper ore so let's go ahead and harvest that <coughs> and uh, again I think the night is falling, so I'm really going to have to kind of get cracking here before the zombies come out. I really want this ore. One thing I can do is I can plant that sand down there and use it as kind of a stepping stone, kind of like a makeshift ladder to get high enough to harvest this, harvest this ore. Keep in mind, I don't have a grappling hook or any rope right now, and so I really need all the help I can get to reach these hard-to-reach places. And looks like there's another slime on the way. Um... That's all right. That should be good enough to get high up. Let's see if I can harvest the rest of this copper ore. All right, piece of cake. All right, and let's run back to base and see if we can maybe smelt something down and see how much copper we have available. And so, having gotten some cactus from the desert, you may notice some green items. Those are cactus items that you can craft on account of having the cactus in your inventory. Things like a cactus lamp, that sort of thing. But that doesn't really concern me right now. What I want is more metal. And so, I believe that was six new bars. Let's see if there's anything I can craft now. Uh, one of the things you're gonna wanna get is an anvil, and I may not be able to actually use this ore or this metal bar stack until I have an anvil. And copper is not strong enough to form an anvil. You really need iron or lead, depending on your world, to create the anvil. And from the anvil, you can craft uh, metal objects. And so I'm really going to have to go out and find some lead or iron. I don't recall seeing either yet. And until I do, I'm not going to really be in a position to craft anything more advanced than wooden items, which is a bit of a bummer. But that's just the nature of the beast. And so 
There's not much to do but to go out and continue exploring. Anyway, that seems like a good leaving off point. We've seen a bit more of the world. We've smelted some copper into copper bars and we've run into the roadblock with this furnace where there's not much else we can craft. Um, going back to the crafting station, you can see uh, regardless of whether you're in front of the crafting station or in front of the furnace, there's really not much you can do without that anvil. And so that's really the next order of business, getting the anvil. We've built the furnace, we've dug a little uh, shaft down into the underground area, and we've ventured a little more into the ice biome, but there's still a lot left to do, obviously, and so that'll be in the next video. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time.